We must run. From what? How very precise with your timing, Jean-Luc Picard. A new starship, the USS Enterprise F, Law, Professor Moriarty, and much more from a brand new Star Trek Picard Season 3 trailer, straight from New York Comic Con. Seriously everyone, don't go anywhere as we've got new looks at the villain of Season 3, the starships, the action, and of course, Mr. Worf himself. Welcome to Trek Central, I'm your host Captain Jack, let's get straight into it. Now unfortunately, we can't actually show you the main trailer here today, we gave you clips and we can show you some b-roll and some detail. And if you want to watch the trailer, then come back to me to actually see all the details, click the link down below in the video description and you can go and watch it. Make sure to hit that subscribe button as we've just hit 100k total subscribers here on the channel, so thank to you. We're now aiming for 150k, so go and hit it. But as always, please let us know your thoughts in the comment section below, because if you're talking about Star Trek Picard, we want to hear about it. Okay, engage. So starting off with this trailer, Picard is at 10 Ford, and he's served by a Tellarite waiter. Picard is approached by two people. One is a Starfleet officer wearing red, but I don't know who this could be. But the other is a random man in a civilian outfit and just says, Admiral. Really, interrupting a man once he's sat down for a meal must be desperate. The next shot is the new Neo Constitution class USS Titan A sitting in a debris field. Now the only ship we can make out in this debris field is a Vulcan scout ship, which was first seen in Star Trek Discovery and has been seen in Picard Season 2 and just recently Strange New Worlds. They're definitely getting their money's worth out of that asset. This might be after the Titan has been attacked and the ship is lying in wait or even damaged, as it does not look powered up fully. The line, I have received a stress call from Beverly Crusher, says Picard, and we saw this in the previous teaser for the final season. Crusher on a ship, the Essos Elios, which we have learned from recent comments by Sho and Terry Matlas, is an old TNG era starship, which is being used as a medical starship. We saw the ship being attacked and boarded by an unknown alien race, and the Crusher had sent a distress call to Jean Luc. Late in this trailer, we see how Crusher survived this encounter, seemingly placing herself into cryogenic suspension on board the ship. So I presume we will have Picard and Riker coming to find Beverly, finding a ship and Bev stuck in cryosleep aboard. But at least it's nice that Picard is enlisting Riker to help him look for Beverly and she's not been offed. What is interesting to note is that Riker is in his captain's uniform, as you can clearly see his captain pips despite the darkness of the scene on them on the ship. We see Raffi undercover in this dirty industrial city location. We were told at Star Trek Day that we will be looking at the dirty underbelly of the Star Trek universe, and it seems like Raffi is up to what she knows best finding conspiracies. A female voice says, we are being hunted, which could be the female villain alluded to by Terry Matlas in previous talks with him, i.e. the villain is hunting them if that makes sense. We get a small look at a four-pronged ship peering over some wreckage and seemingly launching those orange ships we've seen previously seen boarding, the Essos Elios. Now eagle eyed viewers did notice that the orange ships look like Elarchi ships seen in Star Trek Online. Whether it's actually Elarchi or on board, it's not known currently. But Terry, or at least some creative, because I can't remember the top of my head, did mention that sometimes other species do use other species ships. So while it may look like the Alachi, it may not be them. These ships seem to be salvaging in the debris field, or perhaps confirming their kills they have hunted. They seem to be searching for something, but what that is, we don't know. Who is out there, Picard says, and we definitely have this creeping feeling of an enemy in the dark, and perhaps a big conspiracy behind them. This is definitely a Khan level villain that's been teased, almost like the Battle of a Nebula in the Wrath of Khan. You know which one I mean, sort of someone out there in the darkness and is hunting them. I love it. A beautiful shot of the USS Titan A going through this orange looking nebula, which looks really like fire. But as someone says, I don't know. We see some sparks flying off a Titan's hull, perhaps an enemy has found its way under the hull of our hero's starship. We do see this four pronged villain ship lurking behind the Titan, as almost it seems like it the lightning strikes to reveal it. This ship from the small prong has four prongs like talon protrusions and a deflected dish in its center, but definitely giving its villain vibe similar to Mirada from 2009, but with less prongs because that ship was quite a lot. Picard says they have to run from some sort of enemy, but perhaps Picard knows more than he's letting on. Or perhaps this is after he rescued Crusher from a ship and found something about the enemy which speaks to their danger. Seeing the villain ship lurking with Nebula, appearing like a spider has caught its prey is truly amazing. And I can't wait to see some of the ship scenes in this season. We didn't get many ship scenes in season 2 of Picard, so hopefully season 3 makes up for it and we're definitely going back to space. It does seem like her ship is called the Warship Shrike, which is definitely an apt name for this ship. And of course, a reveal of a villain, who is called Vadik played by Amanda Plummer, daughter of Christopher Plummer, who was previously played General Chang in the Undiscovered Country. 
herself, she's a distinguished actress playing characters like Honey Bunny in Pulp Fiction. I have to say, from the little we see of her in this trailer, she definitely gives classic TNG villain vibes. But who she is, who knows. Nothing distinguishes herself to any known Star Trek species, so she could be human. Then does she have any connection to our TNG cast, or is she merely a new character? How very precise with your timing, Jean-Luc Picard. She says, in a way that almost accounts for everything is going to happen. She probably has lulled our heroes into a trap, and we hear later it's to take down the Federation. But for what reason? We're gonna have to wait and see. Vardic attacks the USS Titan A, laughing as she does. And it seems like she does so with ease against the Titan, not even firing back. Perhaps due to something in the nebula or trap laid by Vadik, or some other reason, we don't know. Before we get back to our new villain, let's return to some of our TNG cast and Mr. Worf. It is amazing to see and hear Michael Dawn's Worf back on our screens. But it seems like Worf has very much changed, now referring pacifism to combat, though he does wield a sword on his back, so he does still defend himself from attack. I didn't mean that to rhyme, it's... Though Riker replying to this with, we're gonna die, gave me a chuckle. I can't wait to see our next gen crew just interact with each other on our screens. The CD urban planet, which presumably Rafi was previously seen on, has the SS La Serena on it. So at least we aren't saying goodbye to that ship too soon. And perhaps even it's passed from Rios to Seven and now to Rafi on their intelligence gathering hunt in the Star Trek universe. We do later get a small scene of Rafi in the La Serena, so I think this probably confirms it. They are blind to something big. This is what Rafi's saying, which very much fits her whole conspiracy theory thing. It gives us more of an idea just how this is considering the last conspiracy Rafi, she was talking about the Zart Vash conspiracy from season 1. The next quote, it'll be always was, attempts on your life. This is Crusher saying it to Jean-Luc, and yeah, so many threats against the Federation started out with Jean-Luc and trying to get him out of the picture, mostly because he was the captain of the Federation flagship, maybe even because of the drive Jean-Luc has to protect the Federation from threats. Perhaps this is why Vadic targets Picard, because with the death of Picard, a hurdle to destroying the Federation will be cleared. We're getting some ships blowing up, but also Picard coming face to face with Commodore Joy de la Forge. He seems almost disgusted that Picard has roped Worf and Riker into a new mess. This could be a reference to the last mess Picard roped Geordi into being the Romulan relocation fleet, with Geordi overseeing Utopia Planitia and only just surviving the attack on Mars, as he was off planet celebrating First Contact Day. He got a lot of survivor's guilt from that, so I can see him still being slightly irritated at Picard for that and doesn't want to see his friends go through the same thing again. Now in an interesting scene, Raffi is fighting Worf on the CD planet. And even Worf describes how he was like Raffi, filled with anger and ready to fight an unknown person. I can see this as a pacifist monk style character, who is able to incapacitate his foes and then talk to them nonchalantly while dealing with them. Now we heard previously that LaForge is going to have two daughters, and we see that one of them is going to be piloting the USS Titan A. I could definitely see Geordi being upset with Picard, but also bringing his daughter into this fair. She's a Starfleet, she knows the risks. I suppose we'll get a scene of Ensign Sidney LaForge and Picard saying it's good to have a LaForge on his ship, similar to Moore Sulu in Star Trek Generations. Geordi will have another daughter played by his actual daughter, Mika Burton, who will play Alandra LaForge. Interestingly enough, these daughters, named as Sydney and Alandra, are the same ones Geordi would have in TNG's All Good Things timeline. So, Troy is back doing her usual empathetic skills, and feels there's a darkness on this ship. It seems that like they're on the Federation ship, so probably the Titan A. And maybe Troy is the one who finds that the ship has been tampered with. Perhaps an intruder, which is why the Shrike is able to penetrate their defences. The shot of Vanek with her red gloves is very creepy. She has a scar trailing down the right side of her face, and her hair is wet, clinging to her face. It's very creepy. Over the dark can hit the heights of Trek villains like Khan Noonien Singh, but we'll have to wait and see if that actually works. We do see some similar footage of a Starfleet building being attacked, but since the last trailer, we have learned this is not Earth, and not Starfleet Museum. Considering it has a new Strange New World shuttle parked out front, one eagle-eyed viewer from our Discord channel managed to figure out the location is in Brazil, with the Starfleet building taking the place of Muncie Football Stadium. This is probably just so they don't have to generate an entire city, and they're probably just putting stuff over a shot of Brazil. Ah, budget saving. We will scorch the earth under which she stands, and the night will brighten with the ashes of Federation, says our new villain, and I can so hear her saying Shakespearean quotes akin to Khan and even General Chang, which Christopher Plummer played. The bridge room that the dark is in looks kinda Klingon, but has uniqueness to it. I don't think a force are single species, but multiple, with some very interesting henchmen next to her. 
Okay, so one really cool scene is of Earth's space dock, the big space station, in all its updated glory, standing of a large force of ships in front of it. Even fireworks are there, so this could be some sort of celebration or memorial service happening. This shot just makes me think of Star Trek Online, with a vast amount of player ships hovering around Earth's space dock and people spamming their firework items. Look, I know you're all going to do it when Picard comes out, don't lie to me. But my favourite shot of this trailer, we finally get the NCC-1701F, and it's the Enterprise F Odyssey class. So I can now die happy. Since Picard was first announced, and for long time subscribers to this channel, you know I'm a big Odyssey class Enterprise F fan, and seeing this on the screen has made me so, so happy. I exhibit to Terry Matlas, you're a diamond. I love you for including this starship. It can't be the big hero ship, and I fear for its life. But if we have Captain Vakil Sean on board, it would make me so happy. I just love this. It's made my week and will probably make my year next year. You all know how happy I am being. I can't wait to see it on screen. But first we'll have vengeance that it says. And we do know she wants to destroy the Federation. Why does she want vengeance against either Federation or Picard? This will get our theory crafting brains worrying. But if you can't think of any reason for a long history of Star Trek she might be connected to, let us know. We see shots firing on the bridge of a Titan and the Titan itself getting hit. Just a lot of action which we cannot wait for. Numerous torpedo shots hitting the hull, which has got to cause a lot of damage. Maybe this new Titan A won't last a season, who knows. But what is interesting is we see Troy in a Starfleet corridor looking at a glowing red thing. Perhaps this could be a physicalization of Empath Troy, sees when she talks about these feelings. This would be a great way and a really good way of modern effects. Actually, physicalizing the pain or the anger of this new foe could be really cool. Or she could just be looking out the window at the stormy evil ash cloud. Anything's possible. There are shots happening on the bridge of a Titan. We could see a boarding scene of the Dak foes against the Titan. And we see some more alien boarders and even Commander Seven taking armed escort Starfleet officers in a turbo lift. I think we can say with some certainty that the captain of a Titan probably doesn't last long. As we see Riker back in command of a Titan A, back in the ship that carries his legacy. Now something I don't think anyone had in their Picard season 3 bingo card is the return of James Moriarty from The Next Generation, with Daniel Davis reprising his role. Yeah, it's an interesting one, but perhaps showing how in trouble Picard is that he's enlisting a force of Moriarty to help deal with this new threat. We're just seeing him do that smirk and then saying, greetings old friend, as he pulls a flintlock pistol. This seems amazing, but I want to know why they're bringing Moriarty back. That isn't the final surprise of this trailer. We see the return of Law to our screens. I suppose this will answer where Law has been this last couple of seasons, especially season one, when it's heavily data centric. We're seeing Geordi, someone who's very close to data and not being there to witness his final moments on the synth homeworld, now being teamed up with Law. It's definitely going to be interesting. You know it is. Don't don't lie to me. You know it is. I've got to say, the more I see of the USS Titan A, the more I like it. I know some of you are still on the fence regarding the ship, but I suggest you give it time and see where it takes us. Yes, it's a shame we don't have the USS Stargazer, but Terry Matlas has mentioned we'll learn more about where the ship is. I've got to say, seeing the Enterprise F has fulfilled one of my long-time wishes of the Star Trek Picard universe. I mean, this part is in the Prime timeline, by the way. Picard takes place in the Prime timeline. We've also learned that there will be a handing of a baton moment in Season 3. Essentially similar to what Dr. McCoy did at the start of Star Trek The Next Generation. The question is, who will be handing the baton to? Maybe the next, next generation? The new generation? We'll have to wait and see. So, Star Trek Picard Season 3 starts on February 16th, 2023. You know we're excited for it. I can't wait to see you more. If you want to keep up to date on all the latest Star Trek news, lore and more, make sure to hit that subscribe button to never miss a video from the team here at Trek Central. You can also follow us on social media or join our community Discord server. For now, I've been Captain Jack. Thank you for watching. You can tell I am massively excited. Thank you to all the team who've helped us out with New York Comic Con, including Don Meister as an editor, TJ who's reporting in the field, Matt who is our freelance editor editing this video, and of course our editor Troy who brings you all the juicy goodness throughout the week. I've been Captain Jack. We'll see you very soon. Live long and prosper, my friends. Goodbye.